for Riley Cooper, I mean, like, that dude deserves a statue. Yeah, I mean, like, me, hey, number one on your speed dial. Hey, I'll tell you what, like, I mean, I didn't know until a couple of days after the fact. I was like, wait a minute, you see the MVP or like we got the yeah, alternative yeah, yeah. team? No doubt about it. And then Ty Floyd, when I struck out 17, <laughs> and like stole it from him. But I was like, when has a pitcher like been a part of like five of the six wins in Omaha? I mean, what a performance. Great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank, Thank you for the time. Yes, sir. Pleasure. So I'm a little late, boys, at the spring game, obviously, as you can see. A couple of booze cruises here to do. Let's do it. Cruise. Grand Salami to the boys. Finally, the track. And I got another one coming. Don't you think I don't? That's how we roll in Tiger Stadium. Just watching the spring games that were on television, one thing that jumped out about your squad is your quarterback. I mean, he's very talented yeah. compared to a lot of the league and a lot of the, the country. I, I wonder, is, is it easier to recruit that position when you have talent or when you don't have talent? Coach Kelly. We're official. Finally, I'm get a chance you. to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just there's Jordy. Monday through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordy Collada show. Yeah, Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast, no matter where we go, we got the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collada Show. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Big day. Big day. Nice start. It's the Jordan Collada Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks. Thank you for the time. Welcome in to a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Collada Show live here as we are on our campus of Click Here Digital just like we are every single day on Interline Avenue in between, in between Airline Highway and Drusilla Avenue on uh, Drusilla Drive on uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. ClickHereDigital.com or if you need a direct contact, you can hit me online at Jordy at ClickHereDigital.com. We're built every single day by our friends at RMB Builders rmb-builders.com and of course on Instagram at rmb-builders you can, set, uh, you can search uh, Rhett and his crew uh, you can get a custom design home a brand new home if you're looking to add on to your home or to your office commercial or residential you can get in touch uh, with Rhett today rmb-builders.com uh, we got Billy Embody on our Southern Regional Medical phone line coming up at Southern uh, 7.30 this morning uh, we will talk to Billy about the latest in recruiting the shakeout of the LSU Bama outcome and what that means uh, to the next wave of players going to both schools. Who was on the sideline on Saturday night? And what's the communication been like with LSU in trying to wrap up this class, uh, doing it with defensive backs and uh, hopefully uh, more defensive players? We'll talk to Billy coming up at 7:30 this morning. And then Jock in his regular second hour spot. I believe JD will be through here right at the top of the hour at uh, at eight o'clock. So looking forward to talking to. Jock about the trip over to Tuscaloosa, what to anticipate this week. No Jaden Daniels at practice yesterday, uh, as uh, Coach Kelly obviously uh, will be talking about that today on the SEC uh, media call for, uh, for around the league. 
uh, the teleconference, just like they do every Wednesday. Uh, so we'll have some of that sound for you coming up. Uh, Kelly will talk to the, the press today uh, after, uh, after practice. He'll also be talking to the press tomorrow after practice and then wrap up the media uh, game week tour with his, uh, his radio show tomorrow night at TJ Ribs. So uh, obviously he'll be asked about the state of his quarterback and just uh, what he anticipates uh, that he will look like under center come Saturday uh, versus Florida. So uh, that will definitely be a storyline that we continue uh, to watch and something that we'll talk about uh, here on the show. Uh, Lloyd is here on this Wednesday morning along with uh, Stewie is, uh, is in the building here. Stewie tired. The tired Stewie he caught himself on a yawn there. You're yeah. in control. Of you, yeah, you could have you could have avoided that. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. What's going on? You pull an all nighter or something? What's going so on? He didn't sleep well. I just okay. Haven't been sleeping well. Man, I hear you on that, brother. Yeah, I don't fall into that. that trap. Yes. When you start getting text messages at 3:30 a.m. Mm. 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 Why aren't you awake? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> sleeping, dog. Uh, make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. We appreciate you starting your Tuesday here with us. Uh, look, if you watch this show, you know that we don't put a lot of stock into the college football playoff committee and their rankings that come out every Tuesday night. We'll talk briefly about them just to let you and give you an idea. If you're on your way into work, you're in the office, and you're looking for a little bit of uh, storylines and some chatter this morning that you can talk about. Uh, but this is no big deal. Like, really, this is all going to shake out on the field, just like it does every single year. People want to be dramatic, make it a soap opera, and really, you know, try to throw things up against, how could Alabama be number eight? So we can talk about Alabama being number eight. I mean, it's got, it's got no effect on the season. Alabama goes to the SEC title game and beats Georgia. They're in the Final Four. It's done. All Alabama has to do is take care of business on the field. Why is Oregon ranked as the top one loss team in the country? Well, I mean, just because they want you talking about Pac-12 and what's going on out west where, you know, you rarely talk about college football. It's, it's, it's a TV show. I mean, it's all it is. They're trying to drum up interest, drum up storylines, drum up talk, talking points. I mean, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. How could Ohio State be still number one in the country? Because it can. And there's no big deal if they are. The college foot, you know, the playoff doesn't begin this weekend. You still got three weeks left in the regular season, plus the conference title games, and all of this stuff will shake itself out. And you'll look back a couple of weeks from now and be like, "What were you talking about back in week nine? Nothing, nothing." So, I mean, last night, not a lot of movement. Ohio State one, Georgia two, Michigan three, Florida State four, Washington five. Oregon 6, Texas 7, Alabama 8, Ole Miss 9, and Penn State rounds out the top 10. So you got a couple of good matchups this weekend. Number 9, Ole Miss taking on number 2, Georgia. Uh, You've got a uh, 13-14 matchup between Tennessee and Missouri. Uh, LSU rolled in at 19. Uh, They are the uh, the top 3 loss team in the country. Hell yeah. As we were saying last week, they're the top 2 loss team in the country. Now they are the top 3 loss team. Uh, in the country. Uh, so, you know, those are the rankings. No change at the top. A lot of people talking about how Ohio State could be at the top. And, and really, Boo Corrigan, who is the, the chairman of the college football playoff committee, who they roll out there every Tuesday night to, you know, give you a bunch of political BS on how they got there when really, I mean, it's just sitting back drinking scotch and throwing stuff up against the wall and, you know, every 30 minutes kind of ranking a team. Um, Do you think they just throw on YouTube highlights? They're like, oh, it looked pretty yeah, good. I mean, they're not watching every good. game. Yeah, Ohio State won again. Yeah, oh, they, got, uh, they only got beat by Rutgers, but nobody's watching. Go down the go down the record list. Like, oh, undefeated, undefeated, big conference. All right, there's your one, there's your two, there's your three. But we could make this thing. I don't want to go home. Right. This thing can last three hours if we wanted to. Absolutely. I mean, it's it it feels like the NCAA is running this thing. Even though the NCAA doesn't have anything to do with it, I mean, but yeah, last but night when they asked it's him the about model. the Michigan situation, I mean, they had to bring back the former president to talk about it. I mean, it's it, it just it means nothing. I mean, really, honestly, I mean, like it means absolutely nothing to what is is, is going to happen this weekend because the games are going to be played, and then it's all going to start to shake itself out. 
just like it does every single year. I mean, Boo Kerrigan is the athletic director at NC State. Army now. He moved on. Oh, well, either way. I mean, we're letting somebody whose team is not even going to be in the conversation talk about well, that's a good thing. Well, it I, is, but it's still like I think the 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 the, the part about the the committee that is is going to be tough to always overcome is that first off, there's no criteria that's been like publicly put out there. Like you really don't know what the criteria is, and then you've got these rollovers every two to three years where it's new people coming in with new opinions. I mean, it's like. There's no standard procedure of how you operate. So it's just, I mean, it, it's really just kind of like a country club. Yeah. I mean, I mean like you pick, out a, you pick out a hotel room in a cool city. Everybody meets up and you just kind of like hang for the weekend, watch college football. And then you're like, all right, what do you want to do? You're like, eh, I don't know. I mean, like, let's, what can get them talking the most? What can get people chirping the most? the loudest let's do that and you know they come to the the resolution of you know i mean not moving a team keeping a team there ranking a team lower than it should be you know all of that stuff that you moving know a team up because they have a big game shows like this national shows people in big markets will chew on talk about and create interest for the sport i mean you know it's not uh, it's not rocket science. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before, and it's it's not as if they're really trying to hide it. I think, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like it's it's not like they're 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 playing like keep away from you. I mean, they're, they're it is kind of what it is. I mean, like there's no rules that say, hey, look, this is what it this is what it takes to be ranked within within the college football playoff. You know, I mean, it's just a it's still kind of objective humans in a room, watching the games, sitting around, talking about it, ranking the teams. You know? And, and look, I, I, un, I understand that people are going to be critical of just about everything. I think the 12-team playoff gets it right. You know I mean? When you think of college football, I, I still believe every year there's only – four to six programs that feel like they can win it. And that's that's on a good year. I, I would say, you know, the, the, the six team. This year would be a great 12-team playoff model because it does feel more open, more winnable by more teams than it has in the past. But for the most part, year in, year out, I don't think that we'll see quarterback play this good all over the country for for a while. I mean, it's it, it's it, it, the, the quarterback play this season is as good in college football as I can recall. I mean, as good as I've seen in a while. I don't know how much we'll we'll get that. LSU currently on the from the athletic would not get in a twelve team playoff just because of the criteria. I guess Ohio State, Georgia, Florida State, Washington would all get a buy five through twelve. Michigan, Oregon, Texas, Alabama. Ole Miss, Penn State, Louisville, Tulane. So even with the LSU being the top-ranked three-loss team, and you feel like in a year like this, LSU would cause some, maybe break some havoc in a 12-team playoff just because of how good the offense is, you still don't have a seat at the table. So you're still looking at you can't lose three games. You know, even with the 12-team playoff, you're still not probably allowed to get in. You don't have a seat at the table where it becomes in this year's model or the current status of the college football playoff, it feels like two losses kicks you out the party. Yeah. So three losses still, even if you're looking at, if you thought you'd have an outside looking in chance, three losses you're kaput. If they were able to have beaten Alabama, maybe win the West and get to the SEC championship, that's a different story. That's going to be your path. Nothing changes for LSU with the 12-team playoff, really. If you're going to continue to play week one games that are against stellar competition, and then have Alabama on the schedule, which they will have both. You can't slip up both times, and you certainly can't drop a conference game outside of the Alabama game. So the path doesn't get much easier for LSU, even with more room at the party. No, I mean, their schedule gets tougher. Right. I mean, you know, you're talking about adding Oklahoma, UCLA, and USC next season. 
right? I mean, that, that you could almost be out of it in September. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, look, it's... That would be a disaster scenario. Whew. If LSU gets Whew. gets bounced early again. And, and look, I, I think we, we have to start really... I know we don't do it down here as much as we probably should, but Willie Fritz and Tulane's program deserves a ton of credit. I think last night was the eighth straight college football playoff ranking that Tulane has been a part of. They're at number 23 right now, and they've set themselves up. I think they got out this weekend barely 13-10 winners Mm -hmm. uh, over East Carolina. Carolina. Uh, They got Tulsa this weekend on ESPN, too. But, uh, I mean, Willie Fritz has... You know, I mean, I know that his stock has been up, and he he turned down the, they turned on the Georgia Tech job in the off season. I to, believe so. To stay at, yeah. at Tulane, and I mean, so obviously his name is probably going to keep coming up year in year out as jobs open. But I mean, Tulane football right now for the second consecutive year feels like another contender. You know, I mean, after getting to the Cotton Bowl last season and beating USC and winning the American like they did, and you know, it looks like they're going to be back in that conference title game. Only one loss to Ole Miss. And gave them all they wanted. <laughs> I mean, really, they they tested Ole Miss. Exactly. I mean, they, and that was with their backup quarterback. I mean, Pratt didn't even play that day. Mm-hmm. So, look, I know it's very unpopular to talk uh, about uh, Tulane in this market, but they deserve uh, uh, some attention and deserve some recognition for what they're doing in the second, you know, in the second year, uh, you know, second consecutive year of – you know, just kind of contending. It's um, it's not something know. that you really ever seen right. before, at least not in my lifetime, yeah, with a, no, a good two-lane football team. I know that they're consistent. They barely scrape by Rice, and then they barely beat East Deer, but they're winning. Mm-hmm. Like you can't really, at the end of the day, ugly, pretty, and different. You put in, you put a W up, you get recognized for that. And I think their quarterback has just got invited to the Senior Bowl. Yeah, Michael Pratt. Yeah. So I think he accepted that invitation. I don't know if he could have come back or not. It was rumors that he was going to transfer. Yeah, I mean to like, a Power Five team. Oh, for next year. Mm-hmm. Well, I think he turned down some some pretty heavy offers in the off season to to stay at Tulane. I mean, there were rumors that Bama made a run at him. That wouldn't shock me. So I mean, you know, I, I would, I, I would imagine that he would be somebody that they're paying attention to. But I mean. I don't know what another season of college football does him any good. I mean, you're ready to go, man. <laughs> you know, like, get to the senior bowl, get evaluated, and get to the next level. Right? I mean, he looks – I mean, I, how much better is he going to get? Right. Well, you I know? guess if it would – if it, you can go to the senior bowl, get evaluated. Get, you can come back to college, right? Sure. They changed that rule? Yeah. Uh, I guess that's what you would do, see where you kind of grade out. And then if you can get a Power 5 offer, you take it and go, okay, let me test myself on this bigger stage if they're going to keep ignoring me. Then I'll go a rule around um, a junior with his degree that can get there and and, and be evaluated. So um, interested to hear what Brian Kelly has to say today, just on the state of his quarterback and and really kind of how that directs the week and what the week ahead is going to look like for LSU versus Florida. Because uh, you're, you're really you know when you're defensively, if you're LSU, you're leaving Tuscaloosa with zero confidence again, right? I mean, like it doesn't matter who the other team is. Right, I mean, we've kind of used the Arkansas example a lot up to this point. I mean, Arkansas offensively is disgustingly bad. I mean, like they played a seven to three their game. offensive coordinator like yeah. three weeks ago. I mean, think about that. <laughs> Just coming out of September, they fired the guy, and Dan Enos, who's got a pretty respectable name in in college football. I mean, they looked horrific, and LSU made. Made made them look like a you know kind of like a a, a a sub a subset to the 2019 edition of LSU's offense. I mean they were they were chopping LSU up, and they they couldn't move the ball against Mississippi State. So I mean th- this this defense coming out of Tuscaloosa definitely limping into the game as far as the confidence goes, right? And now with Florida coming in and the health of your quarterback really in question, you know, you you really wonder what is going, what's going to be the week? How does the week feel if Jaden Daniels can't go on on Saturday? And I don't think that Brian Kelly will tell you whether or not he can play. 
Uh, but you'll get an idea, at least, I think Kelly does a, a pretty good job in communication of, of just kind of letting you in a little bit to give you an idea of what's going on and, and how they feel about it. But, um, you know, obviously a huge, enormous story uh, for LSU going going into the weekend. Because if it is Garrett Nussmeyer, and Nussmeyer obviously would be the next guy up if Daniels can't go, you know, the, the identity of the offense changes dramatically. And especially if you're a defensive coordinator on the other sideline, right? There's a lot of things that you got to worry about with Jaden Daniels back there that probably, you know, makes the week of preparation for LSU very stressful. I mean, like a lot of anxiety keeping you up of, well, if I, if I take away this, what, what happens if this gets going? If I take away that, how am I going to stop Jaden Daniels running? How am I going to stop Logan Diggs? How am I going to stop Mason Ted? You know, just like a lot of waves coming at you. Put Garrett Nussmeyer in there, all you know, you kind of lose a lot of the threats. You still have this big play capability, and you've got big play makers. So, I mean, I'm not saying that LSU regresses so much that they can't win the game, but you definitely lose the component of. Really, Daniel's mobility, obviously, which is really the X factor of of what makes him who he is. And, you know, his his veteran ability and experience that now has really shown its value over the last six weeks in, in leading LSU in his final season of college football. Right? Where, I mean, you, you have seen the 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 experience really take over and take him to another level. I mean, it, it's kind of he's looked he's looked more elite than even the top players he's playing against and with throughout this year. Right? I mean, it, kind of the feel that Burrow had to him, where where he was just kind of a click above everyone. He saw it first. He made the pass there before the cut was made. He was able to kind of get out of, of things that you thought there's no way he's going to be able to spin out of the hands of Jordan Davis and find Jordan Jefferson on the sideline, right? Yeah, he did. You know, I mean, the same thing of Daniels where you're like, no way he's going to get out of this. Next thing you know, he's in the open field, you know, making people miss. I mean, it's just he he has this 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 kind of Jedi feel to him where he sees, feels, and is able to to move one step, two steps ahead of everybody around him. I mean, that's the portion that nobody can replicate, right? You can be as as skilled, you can be as talented, you can be as good as as anybody out there. But if you don't have that games, you know, if you don't have those games under your belt and that that experience that comes along with just kind of seeing it, feeling it, knowing what it looks like, knowing how to react in certain moments when things come at you, you know, you, you, you'll have to do it for the first time. And, you know, with LSU's offense, you lose a lot of that luster. You lose a lot of that 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 playability. And you want to talk about Jaden Daniels proving his value. I think when he comes off the field, I mean, his stock soars at already a high level, at a high price. Because he just does so many things that not necessarily covers things up for LSU, just makes you that much better. Right? I mean, he's just his ability to see it before it really happens. Yeah, I mean, that's been, that's been the key component of you've based your offense around Jaden Daniels as yes. opposed to where you were, I don't want to say limited by him last year, but it wasn't this. It wasn't where your best player on the offense is your quarterback. And I I mean, I have full confidence in Nussmeyer, but it's going to just look different. And Garrett Dellinger said it himself yesterday at a press conference where he's like, okay, if it's not, if you lose the ability for Jaden Daniels to run the football against Florida, if he can't play, he's like, well, then Nuss is just going to throw it for 40 yards and it's still a touchdown. So obviously their play styles are different, but Nussmeyer, even in limited action, you saw him against Army, he was able to make some throws where you're like, okay, there's he's certain, always going to have that. There's a certain excitement too that comes with him. Right. Right. But, there's a certain, I mean, even, <clears throat> certainly before the year. Even with Dan, well, I mean, even with Daniels where he is making the big plays, you know, I mean, you know the mindset of Nussmeyer and what he's looking to do. So he brings a certain excitement to the, to the plan, right? I mean, whether, you know, it works out or not, you just have to, you just have to wait and see. 
Uh, you, you see on our screen every single day our friends over at City Cafe and love the, the, the work of Squeaky Miranda and Cody Miranda. They have been supporters of ours for, for a long time and will always appreciate that. And want to remind you about City Cafe and what they got going on for Thanksgiving this year. They're taking it on. They want to prepare your Thanksgiving dinner. You can find out more about it at citycafebr.net. But we're talking 12 to 14 pound fried turkeys, two quarts of cornbread dressing, two quarts of green beans or yams. One quart of turkey gravy, a cup of cranberry sauce that you can pick up. It feeds 10 to 12 people over at City Cafe. Uh, the fried dinner runs at about 120 bucks. It's $117.99. And then the turkey only, if you just want to get the only uh, only the turkey, uh, you can do that for $90. bucks, 89 99 from our friends over at City Cafe. They also have a quart of seafood gumbo that you can pick up and a quart of, of uh, the uh, crab and corn Bis. So they want to take care of Thanksgiving dinner for you over at City Cafe. Let them do that at citycafebr.net. You know they're located over there on O'Neill Lane, 4710 O'Neill Lane, uh, a staple of Baton Rouge, uh, a staple of South Louisiana, uh, started in Plaquemine over 100 years ago. They've been in business uh, over at City Cafe, citycafebr.net. They want to take care of your Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, let them do that at citycafebr.net. All right, Billy Embody coming up here in a couple of minutes. We'll talk to Bill about what's going on in the recruiting world, uh, especially around this LSU-Alabama time, what LSU is looking forward to in the offseason. There was a clip of Brian Kelly that came out of the postgame locker room uh, with, with, with LSU asking and urging his team if they wanted to be elite, right? Like that was the message. He, he had complimented them and told them that they had played good on Saturday night, but good wasn't good enough. And that the program was heading to an elite status and it was going to have to be done with the players that were in the room. And that he, he was going to take it there. And it was a bit of emotion and a bit of, you know, kind of head coach with his team after a, a tough loss. Right? And, and, and when I watch that, I really want to believe Brian Kelly. Like, I, I really want to hear that message and say, yeah, right. Like that's, that's, that's it. Like you got to get there. I just hope that Kelly is looking around when he, he makes these road trips to Tuscaloosa. He, he, he squares off against Georgia and Atlanta. He, he plays Texas A&M in college station. He goes to Florida last season. He plays Florida state in back to back years where you see that it's the athlete that 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 shoved and beat and pummeled Notre Dame when he was there from the SEC. Think 2012 national championship game in Miami. Notre Dame, Eddie Lacy running through Manti Teo and, and that defense. And it was just a different player, a different athlete, a different mindset. That's the part that if Kelly is practicing what he preaches in wanting to be elite, he's got to get to a place where he goes and gets those guys. And that he has to accept that he's going to have to implement his principles, his discipline, his methods with a different type of athlete that he's recruited, developed, coached, and one with. And I think right now that's kind of the fork in the road. That feels like kind of the disconnect of of where that message and, and how it hits, at least for me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm being overly no, uh, this insightful is to it. It just it just feels like I I I, I believe him. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I and, and I want to believe him. I just believe that he he might think he can get there a different way that just i mean there's an interstate way and then there's the back roads you know there's a, a path to being elite that has been carved out many times before at LSU and it feels like he wants to do it kind of i mean to quote the the old Ed Orgeron I'm going to do it my way mm -hmm. or quote i guess Frank Sinatra I'm going to do it my way but that's where i think that's where the frustration lies with some LSU fans is You've seen it built 
so many times before one way where this is how you do it. Well, it's Why proven. would you stray from the path? Right. It's proven. And he's I, like, well, I'm building the path. Let me know when we got Bill. Um, Stewie, please. Do we have him? Um, Cause I, I want to get back to this or I, you know, I want to talk more about it, but you know, I mean, I, I think there's, there's certain things in the program that needed to be overhauled, that needed to be changed, that needed to be set in the right direction. Right. That was, you couldn't deny it. It was inarguable. You know, there, there's also things within the program that you have to take a, a professional look at and say, this has worked no matter who was here. And this has really been the blueprint and the method to build the whole operation, right? Like it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it, it's proven, you know I mean? Whether it's Saban, uh, Billy said he needs about two minutes. Uh, whether it's it, it's Saban, Saban whether Wes. it's Miles, whether it's Ogeron. And, and, you know, I think Brian Kelly is, he, he has not embraced that part of the model, right? Where there were some things in the model that was broken that needed to either be repaired or it just needed to be thrown out. It needed to be overhauled. But there was also things that were functioning at a very high level. And recruiting a certain type of athlete and bringing in a certain type of mindset has really worked for LSU. Right now, if you can combine that with, you know, the, the standard of what Brian Kelly is trying to build at LSU and, and in the football program, I think you've got you've got an opportunity to create something that's very special. Like you could go on a run where you can contend every year, especially in the world of a 12 team playoff. And from that locker room setting, when he's preaching that message, again, I want to believe that. I want to believe that he he sees that. He knows what he's looking at. He knows how to get there. But then when you take a step back and you really got to say out loud, like, hey, man, Brian Kelly's been in it for 33 years. He's still yet to get to the championship mountaintop. And the reason that he came to LSU was not because he liked Baton Rouge. Right. He came here for the players Well, that, that you can earlier, recruit. Earlier this week, he said at his press conference, I came to LSU to be great. To be elite. I wanted to be elite. I didn't come here to be good. I wanted to be elite. And it's like, all right. I think when, when you took the job, people thought this is this is kind of the, the, the you know, the the, the oomph that LSU needed to kind of get over the hump, get the guy in here that knows how to create consistency, mm-hmm. create standards, but not mess with the players that are coming in. Just help those guys instill that in their life. You didn't have to change the identity of what LSU was or is. Right. Because nobody wanted that. I think that was a lot of the, maybe a little bit of the fear whenever he was hired is don't come down here and make it Notre Dame. Yeah, Like, come embrace the culture and what LSU is. I don't think he's done that exactly, but he has some core tenets that he sticks to very strongly, and it feels like some of the things that he's kind of shaking around, it's like, and you said this before the show, it's like, if you want to be elite, you have to start making elite decisions. Like, right. Brian Kelly, you got to look in the mirror. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know... Because he's been good. Elite decision, I, I think... He's never been elite. You have to you have to look at the standard, right? Like, he, he's, he, he constantly compares... LSU to Alabama and Georgia. Like, really. I think he kind of does it almost without... Well, he knows you know, what the best of, in the country is. Right. Well, I mean, he and he's seen it. But I think when he really takes a deep dive into those programs and, and gets to doing his research, you have to really realize, like, nobody on that staff, nobody in the building is, 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 is there because they're... They're a relationship. And if they are, they're in a position where they just get the gear. You know, they just, they're just able to kind of be somebody who is an ambassador for the program and shakes hands and makes sure that, you know, I mean, that they're wearing the, they're wearing the colors when people see them. Right. And I think those are some of the things that Brian Kelly has to embrace and has to bring in at every position and every level, because you also don't want to lose sight that it is, look, it's, it's year two. On a, on a project that started with 38 scholarship players. So what is fair, right? What What is what is the expectation to really have it there? And, and I think that has to be balanced. And, you know, I think that people's patience run thin 
in SEC football cities. You know, I think that's just the way of the world. And some things are unfair to ask in, in Kelly to have it turned around so quickly. But on the other hand, you can get there a lot faster with a proven method that has worked through three coaching regimes and all ended in at least one national title for each of them. You know, I mean, it took, don't overthink it. Right. Right? It, like, I mean, it's like, hey, look at those three models. What was the, what was the, 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 the common denominator there? I mean, a the lot of the talent, a lot of the nucleus, a lot of the players, a lot of the leadership, a lot of the captains, a lot of the, the, the playmakers, all from a certain area, all with a similar type of mindset, all with a similar type of background, all with a similar type of desire of what they wanted to accomplish. Right. And it, it all kind of, it all kind of came together to 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 build championship level football. It, so, look, man, I respect what Brian Kelly does. I love how the he's come in here and implemented what he's done. I, I think that he's getting the realization now, or at least going through that part of it where he's understanding it, it's got to be, it's it's got to be with a, a certain type of player. You know, it's got to be with, uh, you know, a, an athlete that. You know, I think from the majority of his coaching career, he just he hasn't he he hasn't coached. You know, I mean, you've got to you you've got to change. It's recruiting Notre Dame is different than recruiting anywhere in the country. Recruiting Notre Dame compared to a heavyweight in the SEC is polarizingly different. I mean, it's extremely different. And I think that there has to be a grace period of kind of understanding, like, okay, this is. This is the the way that they that they you you do it in in this part of the country, and you know he's got a great resource in Frank Wilson on his right hand. You know, what I mean, like you you've got one of the best, a proven leader, a proven recruiter who can build rosters, does it the correct way, knows how to evaluate what positions of need who to go after, how many players, how many offers, what it looks like to just build an 85-man scholarship roster in college football. So, you know, I think that's that's the part that when, when, when I hear Kelly's message in the locker room about being elite, I think that's the part where I think he has to embrace to get there. We have Bill. Uh, all right, let's go to, the, uh, to our uh, Southern Regional Medical phone lines. Uh, Billy, sorry if you were waiting there, uh, but we appreciate you joining us here live on this Wednesday morning. Uh, Billy Embody, one of our favorites uh, from On3. Uh, of course, uh, after a weekend of heavy recruits in Tuscaloosa, always look to catch up with our friends over at On3. You can follow uh, Billy, of course, on social media at Billy Embody. Billy, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, the shakeout of this weekend, Billy, what's it do for recruiting? This game always has a huge emphasis on what happens in the early and late signing periods. Uh, what's the 2023 edition mean? Yeah, I think this one is not necessarily one that rocks the boat as much. Um, I think LSU played well uh, and, and obviously took that lead early in the second half. And for the most part, recruits won't look at one game and say, Oh man, wow! That that is uh, you know so bad. This is uh, I'm not interested anymore, or you know I'm not going to go there anymore, and things like that. You know, Jaden obviously got knocked out with a concussion and and or whatever protocol he's in, and uh, I think that's something where on the surface recruits will probably look at that and say, wow, that's that's the you know difference in the game type of thing. You know, you kind of don't hold certain things against uh, a coaching staff when a Heisman Trophy quarterback you know gets knocked out like that. But um, I, I think. For defensive recruits, there's opportunity to be had, right? And and LSU is uh, trying to flip some of uh, A&M's uh, top defensive commits, Gabe Relaford, Terry Bussey, guys like that. Um, and, and they're, you know, still trying on, on guys across the country to see if they can get some late guys in on visits and, and what have you. But um, I don't necessarily think it's a game that really rocks the boat much for a lot of these guys overall. And um, a lot of younger players were in Tuscaloosa, uh, some Louisiana guys uh, like Lamar Brown uh, at U High. 
2025 five-star quarterback George McIntyre, who's an LSU target, was there. Caleb Cunningham, a five-star wideout from Mississippi. Um, Jakeem Stewart was in Tuscaloosa. Uh, he's seen LSU a lot. Anthony Jones, a top linebacker in, in 2026, was there. So those guys, once again, kind of got exposed to, to LSU and um, got to look at them up close and personal. But overall, I don't, I don't think it does too much, especially when you're not the team hosting prospects. Yeah. Uh, here to Baton Rouge, you mentioned Lamar Brown, the offensive lineman at University High. He's a guy uh, in the recruiting cycle that is, is flying up the charts, I think moving to a five-star status pretty, pretty quickly here. At the end of the month, his teammate Keelan Moses will make his decision. Uh, Moses has been trending and, and feeling like an LSU commit for a while. He did have some interesting social media um, uh, platform. Uh, he put some stuff out on social media over the weekend. Read into anything going on with Moses, and what do you expect at the end of the month for the University High Star? Yeah, I, I don't read into that stuff too much. I mean, you know, people remember Colin Simmons saying shock the world and things like that, and then he quits Texas. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's just one of those things uh, that some guys, you know, might you know try to drum things up. Um, and, and this is their moment. And especially if you are going to lock it in and, and stay you know, committed, like I would expect Keelan Moses to, um, wherever he goes, um, which I think is going to be LSU. And the reason is, I mean, he's just one of those guys that wants to lead in a class. Um, he is taking uh, off the top of my head, kind of one of the top couple guys in that 2025 class, especially from Louisiana in terms of guys that I just really enjoy talking with. I mean, he's just a yeah. really mature young man who who knows what's uh, what the process is about. Obviously, his brother Dylan went through it um, and just has a really, really good head on his shoulder. So I expect to be LSU on November 30th when, when he announces, and it'll be cool. I believe he's doing it at his school's uh, basketball game. Um, all right, Billy, take me to the, the areas of need here for LSU. Uh, defensive line, you mentioned Gabe Relaford. Uh, what's happening on the junior college front there or any guys that may be flying onto the radar here for the Tigers? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll note quickly that the transfer portal window opens Monday, December 4th. And you can imagine LSU will uh, try to be very active in that spot, especially um, on the defensive for an official visit later this year. He goes to Southwest Mississippi Junior College. He's got some big offers. He's got, I believe, Georgia's offered. I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, Georgia's offered, uh, Miami's offered, uh, a couple other big schools have offered, but then uh, LSU's jumped in the mix as well, and he's just a huge body in the middle. Uh, and then Sean Washington, uh, who is a former New Orleans area star, who was a one-time LSU commit, you know, they parted ways, that was back when uh, Coach O was, was in town, and uh, he ends up signing with Georgia, it doesn't work out there, he lands uh, in junior college as well. And now he's he's looking for a new home, and, and LSU is right in the mix. Uh, Sean was at the LSU-Alabama game, I believe, as well. Um, he's somebody that I would expect they bring in for an official visit at this point, and those are two really big body guys on the defensive line from the junior college ranks that you can keep an eye on. How about in the defensive backfield? Obviously another area that LSU is targeting this recruiting cycle. I any names, any new names? Obviously we saw the Causey commitment the last time we talked. Yeah, I think we're, we're watching to see what Kai Bates does. He's somebody that I would kind of be surprised if he signed with LSU at this point. But the staff has done a really nice job of evaluating corners throughout the process and looking elsewhere for help, knowing that they have to load up that cornerback room. They have Juwan Johnson. They have Wallace Foster. They're recruiting Terry Bussey, who could play nickel, who could play free safety. Um, but I, I think there are corners to be had maybe late in the cycle. Um, We'll see kind of who those names are. Haven't seen any new offers go out just yet. Uh, but um, if Kai Bates does indeed go elsewhere, I think we'll see them move on a high school corner. And if not, the portal is some is a spot where we saw it in 2022 really help LSU in a big way. And in 2023, it hasn't worked out as as much, obviously. <laughs> but uh, they'll they'll look to kind of rekindle some of that. Um, magic with with the corners uh, coming from the portal uh this this cycle and i mean honestly more often than not it'll work out they'll hope to hit on a guy like a zai alexander type and uh, a jurek bernard converse and makai garner I, I i like what they've done really more often than not recruiting corners out of the portal so 
Uh, I know the big name is Denver Harrison. It hasn't worked out and Deuce Chestnut, but uh, they've done better uh, more often than not when it comes to those corners. Billy, you were able to catch up with Bryce Underwood, the five-star quarterback who made a trip down to LSU a couple of weeks ago uh, for the Auburn game. Uh, what were you able to pick up from the visit? Yeah, just that that he really enjoyed himself. Uh, it was it was a great time for him and his family to once again get down to uh, Baton Rouge and experience Tiger Stadium. The place was rocking. Uh, that stood out in a big way for him. It, he's kind of in an interesting spot right now because he confirmed that he's planning on making his commitment on January 6th to honor his late great-grandmother. And I, I think that for him, he in Michigan, you have the playoffs that end – Thanksgiving weekend, the state championship is that weekend. I, you know, probably easier to get around uh, before the the calendar turns to December, uh, all the way up there. But so he's going through playoffs right now. So like he won't get the chance to, in all likelihood, come back for for an LSU game or make a trip to Michigan for the Ohio State game. Those are things he won't be able to do um, most likely. And so then that means does he go and and head over to these schools in December and get one last look? Does he pop in to one of his top seven schools? Uh, he um, added Alabama, Florida State, Oregon, um, LSU, Michigan, of course, and then a, a couple others um, to that uh, final seven that he released this week. Are, is there going to be a school that pops in there and you know changes in Colorado and Penn State were the other two? Uh, they both hosted him this year, but will he go to an Oregon? Will he check out a Florida State? Those are schools with quarterback commits in 2025, but I think both are open to taking another, obviously, if it would be a Bryce Underwood. And will that shake things up? I don't know, but if he were committing today, I would I would put my money on, on LSU. Uh, a lot of people have been on Draylon Miller uh, watch. Uh, Miller made a trip to Boulder uh, over, uh, over the last couple of weekends, and someone who's got a good relationship with LSU and the staff uh, where does he sit right now after decommitting from Texas A&M a few weeks ago? Yeah, I think Draylon Miller is one where uh, at, at the Bengal Tiger, where you find our stuff, um, we we kind of said if, if Draylon Miller committed shortly after he decommitted uh, from Texas A&M, it would be to LSU, and that would be the optimal situation. Now that he has stretched it out, it's very unclear what's going to happen, I think. Um, you hope that he makes it back uh, to LSU sooner rather than later for another visit. Uh, at the same time, I think this is, once again, shaping up to be an LSU-Texas A&M battle. And the longer it drags out, we'll see. By that point, if he if he takes it all the way to the early signing period, LSU might have a portal commitment from a, re- of a receiver. Um, they could you know, address it that way. Or, you know, maybe they can get him on board. Uh, There's also Courtney Crutchfield, who decommitted from Arkansas, who uh, there's a lot of smoke around Missouri, but LSU is still working to uh, maybe bring him in as an option. He's a versatile prospect to play uh, wide receiver or defensive back. But, you know, Draylon Miller is just somebody that at this point LSU's kind of been waiting on. And uh, he didn't pull the Weston Davis where he flipped right away. Um, Instead, he's you know, taking more visits. And so it's it's just going to be an interesting one to watch. They're still recruiting him. They're still very, very much in the mix. But as he drags it out, um, we'll just kind of have to see on that one. Yep. Uh, Billy Embody joining us here. Uh, Jordy Collada show, as always, talking some recruiting and talking the, uh, obviously, this part of the schedule, Billy, uh, when you're talking about the early signing period, how much shakeup do you start to see uh, with classes, commitment, signings, uh, when you're talking about this part of the schedule? Yeah, I think uh, we're good for probably, you know, a couple guys to, you know, not end up at uh, wherever they're committed, and that goes for across the country. We saw Andre Evans flip to Georgia. We saw Weston J- Davis flip to LSU. We've seen, you know, the battle continue to rage on for Gay Relliford, Terry Bussey, um, uh, other guys uh, that are committed to A&M like Draylon Miller or, or were committed to A&M. Um, those things are all ongoing and happening, and we're watching Kai Bates at this point to see if he maybe goes elsewhere. I think for the most part, though, LSU's class is pretty set. Um, we'll see. There's always kind of that surprise or you know, somebody that strings it along all the way to the final hour um, for many schools across the country that flips elsewhere. So it is one of those interesting times of year where uh, you know, we kind of expect the unexpected at this point. 
Uh, Billy, before we get you out of here, give me some thoughts on this men's basketball team. Uh, and, and, I mean, they, they can score. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the opening win, uh, I like to see that from Will Baker. I've known Will for a long, long time, and I, I think that was a nice moment for him to to just start off his career the right way. Um, that was big for me watching that. Um, I, I think for you know LSU, they're they're going to have uh, tougher tasks ahead uh, than, than Mississippi Valley State, of course. But uh, for Will Baker, I think that's a big, big positive. You know, just to be that efficient, 10 of 11, it wasn't like he was – you know, 10 of 25 or something, you know, just volume scoring and things like that. Um, he did a little bit of everything. And, and that was the big thing that, that stuck out to me. I like what Jordan Wright brought to the table. You could tell that he's a veteran. Um, I, I, I wish Jalen Cook was out there for LSU. I think he'd be a massive difference maker for this team uh, running the show. But um, it was a nice first impression, uh, no doubt. A pretty, pretty easy uh, win for them to open things up. Billy Embody, a part of Bengal Tiger and the On3 cast that you can find over there doing great work, podcasting as well that you can find wherever you uh, pick up your podcast at. And uh, they are here with us every single week. You can follow him on social media at Billy Embody. Thank you, Bill. Have a good, uh, a good day, good weekend. We'll talk next week. Appreciate you guys having me. Have a good one. Uh, Billy Embody checking in. Remember, we're daily brought to you by our friends over at Go Roof, G E A U X Roof.com. Get in touch with the boys today online at G E A U X Roof.com or dial them up. 225 927 8300 is the phone number. A beautiful roof every single time. You get that two year free workmanship guarantee with all new roof installations, competitive pricing, free quotes. Free roof inspections. You call them today. Call them this morning. They'll be up on the roof today diagnosing the problem, telling you whether or not you need a new roof or you just need it repaired. Uh, if you need a new one, they'll work directly with the insurance company and take that headache out of it for you. they got over 15 years of experience. Doesn't matter if it's residential roofing, commercial roofing, or like we said, you just need some maintenance or some roofing repairs done. Uh, our friends over at Go Roof can do it all. G-E-A-U-X roof.com. G E. A-U-X roof.com, a beautiful roof every single time. Call them, 225-927-8300, or just log online, G-E-A-U-X roof.com. Go Roof, uh, proud partners here of the Jordy Collada Show. Hour two, we're going to have Jacques with us. He'll be in at 8 a.m. Jacques will be talking about the trip to T-Town. We'll also be talking about the week ahead uh, with LSU in Florida. What happens if uh, uh, if Jaden Daniels cannot go? We'll also talk to Jacques a little bit about the Saints who've Tied two together here uh, in the NFC South. Uh, last week beating Chicago. Uh, before that beating, uh, who was it, Carolina? Did they beat before that? Nobody remembers. The Saints. Who yeah. Who was their two wins in a row? I know they just beat Chicago. I don't really watch the Saints. I'm be was honest. it Carolina before that? Yes, it yes. was. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Thank you. I'm drowning. <laughs> I, did, I was trying to. Be a life vest Chicago, for the, it was the Colts. It was the, the Colts. Colts. The Colts. I'm always they watching lost the Colts. teams. They lost to the Jags. They lost to the Texans. Jags are legit. Texans seem to be legit. Those don't look as bad no. as going into it now. I mean, CJ Stroud is a player. dog. I mean, like a player. Uh, all right, hour two, coming back with us, uh, as always, built by RMB Builders, rmb-builders.com, rmb-builders.com. Drowning. Oh, Somebody it, threw me a life vest. Like, he's fine. He can swim. God's this sakes. is how I learned. Hour <laughs> uh, two next. Hit the, hit the like button. Maybe. They start to think you fall enough and they start in the flip. Circumstances start to change and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter who side the hip. They try to... Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A-Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A-Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. 
I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done! Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Ochsner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Ochsner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Ochsner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make yep. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. Hey, Greg. Roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from, I always thought I would come back to Louisiana and practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of, you know, access for our community to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Malik Neighbors, a rise receiver. Favorite pregame meal? Popeyes. What would winning a national championship mean to you? It would mean a lot to me because, you know, we've seen a lot of the greats come through here, you know, won their national championship, got, you know, remembered for life. If you get one superpower, what would it be? Probably fly. That on telekinesis. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Do it wrong, do it long, do it right, do it light. Kyle Lee's wide receiver, number two. Do you have any nicknames? K2. What's the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Stay humble. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Fly. I'll be flying in my dreams. What's been the highlight of your partnership with us? The bike giveaway was one of the best things. I was pretty excited about that one. Texas a and I just got a point to prove because last year I dropped two balls. I should have caught. I'm coming for them for real. That's it. Thank you, man. My name is Harold Perkins, and I play linebacker. What's your favorite pre-game meal or snack? Pasta. With a little steak. Something that's not too heavy. Any superstitions or pre-game rituals? I pray a lot. Just be me and God before the game. Perky worky. <laughs> I like when they call me the perky lady. I like that. If anyone gets in a wreck, who should they call? Gore. <laughs> Where were you born at, Greg? Hattiesburg, Mississippi. But I claim Favo food because I was raised there my whole life. Favorite type of food is spaghetti. But you need to try spaghetti with some corn on the side. Funniest person would probably get Kyron Lacey. He'd be having jokes out every time I talk to him. Who's the most athletic? You know, besides myself. 
perk of uh, Malik. If you just step, just take one day at a time, one step at a time. If you're doing something, just be where your feet are. Make sure you give 100% effort. What is something on your bucket list? Win a Super Bowl. That's definitely on my bucket list. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Time traveling. Who's the fastest on the team? Like in a short span, I would say quick trigger. I'm taking perk. One thing most people don't know about me, probably that I moved 12 times growing up, 12 different states. Who's the most savage on the team? Mason Smith. Mason Smith, definitely. And who gets it done? Gordon. <laughs> Thank you, man. That was great. Emory Jones, right tough. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Got it from my mom, and she just told me, you know, always keep your head on the swivel. Favorite subject? Math. Easy. I kind of keep it light. Give me some type of red beans or something like that. Throw a little cornbread on the side. Light with red beans. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> I am superstitious. I got some PSDs that's purple and uh, yellow and white. I wear them every game. I feel like they my lucky draws. And, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> As primary care sports physicians, the things we think about the most with our athletes from a medical standpoint usually involves the head, the climate, and the heart. We have to be very careful about participating in sports when it is safe, but also having the proper equipment to take care of them if we are worried about the athletes. So here in Louisiana, obviously heat can be a big problem. Things that I think about as a primary care sports medicine physician is that it's safe enough for our athletes to participate. And there are certain regulations that we follow here at Ochsner, but throughout the entire state to make sure it is safe for our athletes to participate. When we think about concussion, we have to really recognize those symptoms from the forefront, and that becomes a cultural issue as well. As for the heart, screening exams are by far the most important thing that we can think about. We go through a, a series of questions, but also listen to the athlete's heart and ask about family history and other symptoms they may have had in the past. By doing so, we can identify and potentially screen out athletes to make sure that they are safe to participate in the sports that they love to do. Push it to the side cause they thought you would quit May bend but never break, your cloth is legit When you return in rare form, they all gon' be sick You ever seen a living legend, just know that I'm me Slow grind like IT, just know that I'm me Now I'm back up in my bag, I'm giving them fits Bounce the bat like John Morant, you know that I'm lit Making plays like Jack Bash, I'm never gon' sit Had to be patient, so I waited for the situation Now that I'm focused, I'ma take it with no hesitation The hard times that I hated gave me inspiration Look in the eyes from my kids, gave me motivation Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back can't let you fold up, keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Every Wednesday, we link up with our favorite Jock Museo. WAFB is the sports director over there at uh, Channel 9. Of course, you can follow him on social media at Jock Museo and follow uh, him every Wednesday uh, here on the show. Good morning, buddy. How are you? Good morning. Good to be in studio with you guys today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate you fighting traffic and getting over here. Uh, I know it's, it's sometimes it's pretty bad out there at this time of the day. A little more resistance than Jalen Milrow saw the other night. <laughs> hey. Tuscaloosa, a little zinger right off the bat yeah, here. Yeah. Smart but, um, ass. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so take me back to Tuscaloosa. Now, let's see. I was there Saturday night. I thought it was a fantastic environment, first and foremost. Uh, yeah. but one that I kind of thought that the game had settled in to what you thought it was going to be. It felt like it was, it was a heavyweight fight. They were going back and forth. The turnover really kind of set LSU back, and that was a difference. What would you see? 
Well, it was a beautiful day for football. It was. Great campus, great atmosphere. We've had a lot of great uh, weather this year, and I enjoy that about the fall. But, um, you know, if your team is structured in the fact that you turn the ball over once and it changes the entire game, then um, you've got a weak foundation, right? Um, Look, uh, Mason Taylor dropped that ball. That was big. You can't go to Tuscaloosa and turn the ball over four times and win. Mm -hmm. But can you turn the ball over once and it not be a disaster? You know, all the pressure is on the offense to score every time they get the ball. And they didn't do that. They missed the field goal. Uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, but the fourth and one call in the first half looked mm. yuck from the from mm-hmm. the opening from the snap. It just looked like that's not going to work. Um, and uh, defensively, you give up eleven out of the first thirteen third downs that that Alabama had. Um, it felt a lot like street ball, honestly. That Milrow was just dropping back. I've heard a lot about linebackers that just run down the field with their back to the ball. And then Milrose just runs it's like Kevin Falk at Karen Crow. He, in the shotgun, he's just running for first downs on third and 15 and whatnot. And so uh, your defense came out, caused a punt on the first drive of the game. Harold Perkins came out, made a sack. And then after that, they, they, they did nothing the entire night. I mean, I was looking at the stats this morning. Do you know how many fumbles LSU's recovered as a defense? Two. The entire year. Uh, 16 quarterback sacks the entire year. Uh, nine interceptions. They're just not impacting the game. Uh, I thought Jalen played at a Heisman Trophy level uh, pretty much the entire night. Uh, I think he had 366 yards early in the third quarter. They could not stop him. Um, and I think that's what kind of uh, you know makes LSU fans a, a bit sick. Did the be- did the better team win? Yes. Yeah. Uh, did um, did officiating uh, impact the winner? No. But I guess it's just this feeling of we're losing. Um, this entitled fan base has a big smile across their face, and they're they're going to drive our quarterback into the ground, knock him out of the game, and get away with it. I mm-hmm. think is is the feeling that a lot of fans. Uh, have today. Alabama fans will say that's an uh, inferiority complex, that you're not as good as us, so you complain about the officiating. Um, and so um, it, it, is, it is tough. I mean, it, it's an old storyline, but it is tough to go over there and if you're an LSU fan, see that fan base smile ear to ear and enjoy what they've had a chance to enjoy the last 16 years. I tried making a conversation with one Alabama fan on Friday. This one person, not a mini mini, <laughs> but, but they're at the they're at the statue. Choose looking at, wisely. Yeah, they're at the statue looking at Saban's statue, and they're talking about how many has he won? Well, he's won six here, and he won. A... So I, I I said, you know, I I said I I interjected. They didn't ask to talk to me, <laughs> but but I said, you know, he the three that he didn't win keep him up more at night than him being happy about the seven he's won. And the guy goes, oh, huh, well, me too. <laughs> You don't Me know too. nothing about this program. <laughs> yeah. We should have won in 2021. We should have another one right now. You know, people say injuries don't matter. Bull. We lost such and such. And I'm just like, that, that. Now, I got a good friend of mine. She tells me, she goes, now, Jacques, you know, if LSU would have won all those fans, those LSU fans would have been just as bad. That's what I was about to ask. So you. I was like, well, I, I don't know about that. But, uh, you know, I, well, I guess we won't know. We, we kind of talk with our mouthful. We've won a couple, right? Right, right. right. Since Saban's been over there. But uh, I don't know when it's going to end. I, I think that they're an elite team. Are they? Is Georgia going to let Jalen Milrow do what LSU did? No. So... Well, I think that's, you know, that that is what you expect from a, a good team is to continue to improve throughout the season, and that's what Alabama has done. I mean, Alabama is significantly a better team than they were. And not to interrupt you real quick, but when we were driving, leaving Starkville, when LSU beat Mississippi State, and we're listening to the radio and on our phone watching Alabama wobble around with South Florida. Yeah. And saying, man, they're in trouble. And and why would we do that? We've done that over and over again where they've looked bad in a September game and said, probably told ourselves, the team we're going to see in November is not the team that they're playing today. And Absolutely. There you go. And I thought that that was a great testament to Brian Kelly's team in year one is that they were improving. They improved so much throughout the year. I mean, I thought that the team that played against Alabama was so much better than the team that played against Florida State, you know, which they just kind of ran out of gas because of their depth at the end of the season and that A&M and Georgia 
game, and once they were able to kind of get their feet back under them, I mean, they played a bad team in the bowl, but they did what they were supposed to do, right? I mean, this Alabama team has improved marketably better throughout the season, and I think it's a fair question to, to, to wonder where that's at at LSU, just the improvement, the development, the, the improvement throughout the year. What would you make of Monday's press conference? Well, obviously, his comment about spying the quarterback was the one that got the most attention. Um, I, I would wonder, the coaches that are paid millions of dollars somewhere during the game, somebody didn't bring that up. Now, I think playing defense is like being a baseball pitcher. You can't keep throwing the same pitch, but you got to mix it up. You know, you got to mix in your curveball. You got to mix in your curveball, Lloyd. So you got to you know, you <laughs> roll it over. Uh, you got to you got to mix up your defensive approach a little bit. And, and the fact that they never spied, I think, over a, a game that lasts three and a half, four hours, that nobody brought that up to do that, I think, is a bit befuddling. Um, I thought it was a good press conference. I, I mean, everyone will say talk is cheap, uh, it, which is always kind of the, the dilemma we face sometimes as media people. I want to ask the questions that you want to ask. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I ask him, and then he answers it, and then they say, well, what do you think he was going to say? You know, so I was like, <laughs> well, I mean, I can't win for losing. <laughs> you know, it's like right. uh, I'm not going to be the angry guy at the bar and be shouting and throwing things at the coach. You know, I did that back in 2010 with Les Miles after Tennessee, and it wasn't the right uh, the right path to go. Struck so I had a lettuce and a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. At the bad comedian. It's like the amateur night, the Apollo, right? right the hook. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, uh, the, the comedian that comes out or whatever. But uh, oh, What a tough gig. Uh, <laughs> Apollo or LSU head coach? No, to Both. be a comedian. Oh yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks they're a comedian, right? It's Especially now, you know. Everyone, everyone, we're so you know in the Twitter world where you just want to jump on people and make fun of them, whatever. But yeah, it's a oh, and and you can't unless you're making jokes about yourself, right? Yeah, someone's yeah, going to get yeah. offended. Yeah. I was very pissed. offended by that joke yeah, you made. Thought right. you were a professional. Cancel. I mean, I saw Chappelle got walked out on couple of weeks ago because he was making some jokes about the war that's going on i mean oh yeah you know yeah. I mean, it's comedy was that was the relief of that apparently the the lsu football team when they went to the cotton bowl to play texas in 2002 mm -hmm. lewis black they brought him they brought the wow. team to see wow. lewis black at some event and, and apparently he made a bunch of off-color jokes and stuff that i remember burtman saying some "Ooh, it's not good <laughs> <laughs> jokes were very uh, inappropriate uh and so that was that was, I, I i remember hearing that story but uh but anyway, uh, so you, you're, you're now sitting in a situation, Jordy, where it's kind of like it's one of those years at the end of less miles where it's not a bad year. It ain't going to be a great year. You right, beat most right. of the teams you're supposed to beat. Right. You beat Missouri. That was a nice win against a pretty good team. But in the games that mattered most, she didn't come through. And so now you're d drifting towards the Duke Mayo Bowl against Boston College Eesh. or – yeah. I, I, I've heard that. I mean, and there's no way they can go back to the Citrus. There's no way that they can play there three times in 366 days, right? I mean, they didn't go to the Florida State game. LSU fans didn't buy tickets to that oh, game. Yeah, no, no. So, um, I mean, it's funny to say we don't want to go to Florida. Right. <laughs> you know, sunshine, palm trees, yeah. you know. Orlando at that. Or Orlando, yeah, it's not a bad gig, really. Um, so, I don't know if they go to, like, to the uh, – they call it the Tax Slayer Bowl. Is that the, the former – the artist formerly known as the Gator Bowl? Oh, wow. And then there's the – they call it the ReliaQuest Bowl, I think. Now, the Outback is gone. They don't call it the out – The ReliaQuest Bowl. The Bowl. Bowl. The, the Cheez-It Bowl is now the Pop-Tarts Bowl, I yes. think. <laughs> there's a Tony the Tiger Bowl out I there. Like, the, I feel like you're playing the game where you could say any bowl name and be like, is this real or fake? The ReliaQuest Bowl, I would vote fake. Like that, <laughs> that? rent a car? I don't know. I'm Googling there's it right a, now. SEC Big a, Ten in Tampa, Florida. There's a Big lawnmore Florida. bowl. The Gasparilla Bowl. Well, I mean, the, the Independence Bowl used to be the pool on weed Pool on weed eater. eater. The weed Jeez. eater bowl. Played in it twice. Uh, now, look, I want to say. I mean, they had the patch on the, <laughs> the, the, the patch. weed whacker. The weed, weed whacker bowl. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I am not of the opinion. I know some people say that these games moving forward are meaningless. They don't matter. I, I don't believe that at all. I agree with that. Uh, I, I think if Brian Kelly goes ten and four and ten and three in the first two years, that looks pretty good, considering what he inherited. And from what I understand, I don't know if Jaden's going to play this week or not. But from what I've heard, he wants to play. Like uh -huh. uh, now, a bowl game may be a different discussion. He may, you know, that that sure. we, whether or not he plays in that, but. Making it to the Heisman Trophy ceremony has been a lifelong goal of his. Well, he should definitely be there. Yeah. 
And so uh, four people get invited. I was talking to Scott Rabelais because I'm a, a voter. I'm like, how many people go? Because sometimes it feels like it's three. Sometimes it feels like it's five. five. Yeah, it's like, well, it's supposed to be four. So four will get, we'll, we'll go up there. Who has your vote right now, J.D.? If you had to vote I, I, I haven't really watched a whole lot of Michael Pennett's. Um, that's his name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, uh, Big Pennix in it, energy. Yeah, energy. Uh, who, who else is? Uh, Bo Nix. Uh, you know, yeah, Bo Nix is a great story. I'm not going to hate on Bo Nix for you Marvin know. Harrison started to get some some, some run some run on it. I think he Caleb doesn't even have more receiving yards than Malik. JJ McCarthy that kills from Michigan. me. I know he doesn't have more yards than Malik, and him and Malik average the same amount of per catch. Well, that's going to be another conversation. I vote on the Bolitnikov too for whatever reason. Uh, they asked me, Malik neighbors. How can he not be? Got to win the got to be. Great chance to win the Blitnikoff. I mean, he's right? got a game worth of stats more than anybody else, and he's played as many games as everybody else. I mean, he he's lapping people. I mean, like it's it's almost like it's like what what are you looking at? Like, why is he not being discussed as the best wide receiver in the country? Because I know how. I mean, a lot of people on big platforms, they're they're numbers bound. They're they're tied to the numbers. Well, if you're tied to the numbers, how do you not see what Malik Neighbors is doing? I mean, even last Saturday night, <laughs> yeah, he ripped that field up, and he had two drops. That one pass in the third quarter that Jaden hit him with on the sideline. The I mean, yeah, there's no margin for error for him going out of bounds or and, and and caught it and got the feet down. And and he's just a dog when it comes to catching the ball against uh, across the middle, taking defenders on. Uh, yards after catch, you know, all those different things. Had a conversation with Rohan and Trev Falk about how does he compare to to Josh Reed. And uh, they said Reed didn't have the speed that Mm -hmm. Malik has. Reed was a former running back who always kind of had to get point A to point B. Malik can go outside, he can go inside, and, um, you know, he's just had an an amazing season uh, so far. So (laughs) I hate when people bring up records. For individual awards, it's an individual award yeah, for a reason. That it's not I don't a team award. Why a record dictates whether or not you're still not putting up numbers. I mean, he's still, it's, it, he can still be the best wide receiver in college football on a three loss team. I mean, just because his team has three losses does not, it, it doesn't signify. I mean, Devontae Adams has been the best wide receiver in the NFL for the last 18 games, 20, 20 games. I mean, He's played on a terrible team. I mean, like, you know, I mean, that that's just – it's not his fault. Marvin Harrison Jr. has got the name. Uh, he plays at Ohio State. He plays in some of these big games or the marquee matchups. Yeah. So, I don't know if that – what that means. I think there's there's part of it to and that. I think it's become a – kind of like the when Grant Delpit won the Thorpe Award, they kind of look back to your uh, body of work, which isn't what the award is for either. But they look back to what he did his sophomore year where he didn't get the blitz in the cough, like, oh – He's clearly the best wide receiver coming in. He should deserve to win the Grand Sure, and look, I mean, I think that that exists. I think that happened to Grant Delpit. Absolutely. I mean, I, I Glenn think Dorsey. Yeah, I mean, was better in 06 and 07. Remember, he got the his knee whacked by Auburn. You could argue Patrick, Patrick Peterson in in 2010. He was better in 09. Definitely. You know, I mean, I mean, it was definitely something that you you build up this respect and you come back a year and it's like, man, that, he's got to be the best, right? You know, I mean. And I think you turn the film on Malik Neighbors, though, to me, he feels like Antonio Brown. Like, he feels like a guy that could do, he could beat you over the top. He could catch a slant route. He can catch it, you know, like he'll go across the middle. He just, he's so versatile and he's so good. I just, I hope he gets his due respect. Or at least, like, you know, you, you say, Jacques, I mean, I just hope he's like the one of three finalists. You know, yeah. I mean, I hope he just gets the respect of yeah. his name being out there because well, he's he's ripping up college football. And you don't want to be this, the divisive media people, but it just it just further illustrates how disappointing the defense has been. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you had the Ole Miss game, and it's like, okay, well, can how much can we improve? And you kept your fingers crossed, and you're like, okay, yeah, they got a week to prepare, a bye week. Let's see what they can can come up with. As <laughs> my neighbor told me, he was like, well. Saban had a week, two weeks to get ready for that defense. You knew he was going to, you know, they were going to come up with something. And really, it wasn't that complex. Yeah, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't at all. And, and look, there's, 
I don't want to trash uh, college athletes, and and I, I've met a lot of their parents, and they're all great people. They're doing the best they can. But you know, somebody told me the other day they they said I don't even know the names of the LSU defensive players to an extent because they never say their names. They never say this guy with the interception or this guy with the quarterback sack or you know this guy forced the fumble. It's just it's just not happening. And so I think, you know, talking to Mike Scarborough last night and, and some other people in recruiting, I think that, 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 that they are at a crossroads right now to an extent. Yeah, they are. Uh, on defensive linemen and talent, uh, you know, is, is uh, Brian Kelly more intelligent and more organized and better structured than the last two head coaches? 100%. But if it's minimized by the fact he's not coaching as much talent as the previous two guys, then are you making any gains? And so I think that that's uh, that's the concern right now. No, I agree, and you know, I mean, I think it's a, it's a clear it's a clear evaluation of the program, and I think Kelly has has really kind of prided himself on on that stuff, and you know, I mean, that's 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 the real part of it, you know, I mean, is that the talent is obviously what has dipped, and what the issue clearly is on that side of the ball. I, I really think you could bring in any coach to this team right now and there's not much that they could really do to improve overall the performance of the defense you know you could you could right. do some things you could tinker you could try some new things but i mean ultimately when it comes down to it it's 11 on 11 well i i know and, I, and when i'm off sometimes i'll watch saints games and have a few beers and you know your your early the early euphoria and happiness of your your alcohol turns to uh, anger and aggression <laughs> at some point there's a tipping point in, in, in the <laughs> night when your team doesn't do well right. you know you start drinking early in the day we're going to win by 30 today and then right. when it doesn't happen and then the hangover starts kicking if you get angry you go to the internet and you write a bunch of stuff i know some people want their pound of flesh but i i, I don't I think it's pretty obvious that firing Matt House in the middle of the year doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah. Uh, who's going to run the defense? Kerry Cooks? Uh, yeah. Who are you going to put in charge at that point? So, I, look, if they if they made a change with Brian Polian, um, they're obviously going to have to take a hard look at this to see what they're going to do on that side of the ball. Um, it's just uh, it's just an unfortunate situation that the people you took out of the transfer portal have not worked out to to an extent and. Look, defense was a even though the score was thirty two thirty one last year. Defense was a huge reason why LSU beat Alabama last year. It was a seven to six game at halftime, and I went back and looked at that. I'm like, you know what? I saw a lot of BJ Ojolari in there. I mm-hmm. saw a lot of Jark Bernard Converse and Makai Garner and those guys who are no longer there. So, um, I, I think that that's a that's a big question. Your talent and, and look, here's another tricky conversation and. Uh, you know, trying to be an adult now, Lloyd, as a sports director. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, trying to pretend. Um, new parking spot. New parking spot. Yeah, well, <laughs> not always. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Might be the McDonald's know. across the street. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the academic thing. Most you know, of it. Mm-hmm. How are you? I, 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 I don't even want to say anything about, you know, you can't overemphasize academics my mom was a teacher and i think that they should do something with that library at lsu put some money into it and fix the thing but i have heard some things of well you can't make this notre dame you can't penalize guys for their grades you can't uh you know not play a guy because he's not doing well or missing his study hall or whatever and so i think that's another (laughs) that's a that's a complicated subject i mean i've talked to a lot of parents who like that they like Sure. Graduate champions. Logan Diggs is a guy who's in, extremely intelligent and has mm-hmm. thoughts about what he wants to do outside of football. Uh, Greg Penn the third at linebacker. He wants to be the first, what does mom tell me, the first black owner in, in, in the NFL. He wants to own an NFL team one day or be a CEO or something. I mean, wow. they, they, these guys have goals after football, but should that impact playing time and how much it, it should is something else I, I hear. So, uh, I agree. Uh, Jacques, what did you make of LSU women earlier this week? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to practice today? Uh, you know, it's funny. I was watching uh, – did you watch the Sylvester Stallone uh, documentary on Netflix the other no. day? There, there's a new uh, Sly Stallone. So I watched it last night. Uh, it was pretty good. It, it was it was a Rocky Three moment, was it not? I mean, it was uh, – I didn't see Angel Reese doing American Express uh, card commercials right. in the offseason. But, right. you know, Rocky, he – he beats Apollo. He, uh, you know, he he's a motorcycle. Doing, he gets the Ferrari. Yeah, the you know, he gets, uh, gets Mickey. Married. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, it's like the Superman too. He goes soft, you know, yeah. and then he gets clubber-langed. And uh, I, I, I thought that 
I think that that is good on November the 6th. I think that that does the team, this is me looking at the, the positive, I think that does the team a lot better good than if they start 10-0 and against a bunch of SWAC and Southland Conference teams and it's just a continuation of last year and we think we're, we're hot stuff and all that. And so, look, they got humbled right out of the gate. They yeah. got taught how difficult this is, how, how difficult it will be. Uh, Andrew Reese has been shoved down everyone's – throat uh, across the country is the opposing view. We've seen the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues. We've seen you hanging out with Beyonce and Jay-Z. We know it. And so now they're, they're going to be targets. And um, uh, I, I heard some people making some some comments about how she, she kind of sat there and let them take it, right? Yeah. No, I think she, she definitely, she didn't call timeout for a reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. she's going to enjoy that part of film. Yeah, you know, it, it's that. a... It's an immediate humbling and teaching them a lesson. And I think they play Virginia Tech at home. Thursday night? Tomorrow. Well, it's, it's a ways off. Virginia oh. Tech comes here. And they've still got Elizabeth Kitley, the big center, and Georgia Amore, the guard. And so I think that's kind of be how much do you improve between now and then? That'll be the next quote unquote big game you play. And then uh, November 30th. November 30th. Next, their, next, their next text. Is it a Thursday text. night, I think, or something? Maybe uh, Thursday, Sundays, right? Uh, yeah, a lot of times Wednesdays yeah, and uh, men are Wednesday Saturdays. South Carolina comes here and obviously I'm not first game. Man, I don't know what day first game out of the November shoot they scored a hundred and whipped Notre Dame. So yeah, they looked good. Yeah, they looked good. So as stacked day. as the roster is, you did lose Alexis Morris, you did lose Ladeja Williams, uh, Jasmine Carson, and so they they got a. They got to figure it out, you know. Sometimes you can take the most talented guitarist, drummer, singer, put them in a room, and they can't write a hit song. So yeah. <laughs> it's got to be about the chemistry. You got to, got to figure that out. Uh, and then, did you have a chance to see the uh, the LSU men play? I went to the first half. Will Baker, brother. Yeah, Will Baker, nineteen. <laughs> Loud nineteen in the first half. He uh, threw threw it down. Had some dunks. Had some uh-huh. outside shots. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, that's a seven footer, man. Yeah, seven foot, seven foot guy. Uh, so I, I stayed for most of the first half. Look, you, you know, it, it's the Facebook comments. Well, the men won and the women lost. Well, it's not exactly apples and apples, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oranges and oranges. Here you got. I think Valley yeah, was Valley State. five and twenty-seven from the SWAC last year. I think statistically, they are the worst basketball team going into the season. Like, <laughs> just, like as the stats read. They're like 120 out of 120. Well, Kent would say, well, all you can do is play who you play, Jordy. I mean, come on. Uh, so, they, yeah, they, they look good. They look pretty good. I mean, yeah. obviously, Jalen Cook got, got denied, right? And uh, that's rough. Uh, good thing Alexis Morris didn't get denied, right? She went to <laughs> Texas A&M. Right. Or, or Baylor. no, Baylor, Texas, Rutgers, yeah. Texas A&M, LSU. She played for four teams. It's like the quarterback at Rice. It's like uh, our guy. Uh, Keaton Slovis? No, no, no. No, the, 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 oh, JT Daniels? JT Daniels. Yeah. I mean, like, this guy's been to USC, Georgia. Where'd he go? He was he Rice, was, and then no, he, he, he has Rice. one more stop. He's got one more. He's, I think he's, he's played in every Power Five conference. He's oh, oh West Virginia. Yeah, he went to West Virginia last year. Well, um, <laughs> make, it, make it make sense. I mean, like, what, like, huh? They suddenly got, they start, suddenly started coming down hard on these second Transfers. What about the third yeah. and the fourth? Once you get past, the once you get past the oh, second one, you're good. And, and the Jalen Cook one, to me, is is, is mind boggling because the NCAA deemed Will Wade's basketball program like venomous. It was poisonous. I mean, they they were telling everybody it's the model of what they're trying to prohibit in the sport. Cook leaves, and then once it's cleaned up, or you know, once Wade's gone, comes wants to come back. How could you tell that guy no? You know, like you 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 pretty much pushed him out. Did I see Bill Self got a new contract? Did you see Bill Self got a new contract? He's the highest paid coach <laughs> in in, 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 in ba- college basketball. He got a lifetime contract. Big smile on his face, no problems, and at Kansas, this is unbelievable. Had to wear long sleeves for those slaps on the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's uh, yeah, that's rough, man. That's. I guess that'll be something that maybe that'll be a thirty for thirty one day. There Jordy. should be you the will I mean? the will Wade days at LSU. And not, I mean, not was the right decision made specifically about Wade just this time in college basketball? You know, I mean, there should be a you know an investigation just from a, a journalism you know a journalistic standpoint of like what was this? You know, like what was Pat Forty, Dick Vitale, Tim Brand, like all these guys that have been you know like. 
come on, they've had front row seats to the sport, right? Like, I mean, they have they have seen Patino, Calipari, Williams, Shashevsky, Bill Self. It's like, always been the dirtiest sport, right? Always. I, it's always been. Always. I mean, that Jerry Tarkanian in, in UNLV, they were running with the mob. I mean, you remember that picture <laughs> of the, the Larry Johnson and Stacey Augman that came out there in the they were in the jacuzzi with like this. Tony Montana? Yeah, like a mobster, man. I mean, like that's, it was. <laughs> Pretty very. Come on. Yeah, fly, Pelican. Pelican. Go, fly. Pelican. <laughs> right. I mean, they got Zion's stepdad on, on, on wiretap turning down 250K from Kansas. I mean, you think yeah. he went to Duke for free? <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. It's yeah. just, it, it's, it's crazy. Think Bobby man. Knight cheated? Right. Yeah, I do. You, you do? Absolutely. Yeah. He had to. I think anybody who has won in college basketball had to, had to shade the rule. I mean, like, it, that you couldn't do it because how could you compete? H- how could you ha- – th- th- everybody was doing it, yeah. right? Trent Johnson, who I admire, who I enjoyed covering, he, he wouldn't play the game. and th- He would it, not cheat. And, Jock, that is the worst basketball program we've ever seen in our lifetime. Yeah. Those three years, those four years, outside – I mean, he won – the but, league, it showed you how good of a coach he was. Right, he coached up Brady's group. Yeah, I mean, like Garrett Temple, Tasman Mitchell team leaving. Chris Johnson was on that team. I mean, that was a Sweet 16 team. You know, I mean, that was a oh yeah, that was a tournament team. Oh yeah, I was there when they played North Carolina and uh, twenty three thousand people in blue and white, and they took them. They pushed them. Yeah, pushed them hard with with a very thin roster. Chris it was Chris Johnson. Yeah, Chris Johnson trying to go up against Tyler Hansborough, mm-hmm. who's like weighing him by like a hundred pounds. I mean, they, they, didn't lose, they, didn't, they didn't lose a game by like they won every game in the tournament by. 15 or 20. It was the biggest test they got was, yeah. was LSU, I think. But, uh, but yeah, and then, and then after that, he had to build up for three years to get a, a team to go to the NIT, and then they got boat raced by uh, Oregon, I think, in the NIT or yeah, something like that. Yeah, they did. So, um, yeah, that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the conundrum, right? I mean, when the fans lead the, the game, did you win or did you lose? That's right. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> no one's going to be sitting on nickels and saying, they well, went to class today. Yeah, the GPAs are higher. Yeah, and, um, right. They did some community service, which is all great. Hey, but... come back. Let me show you the attendance report for class. <laughs> We're very proud of it. You know, it's like, well, that's a good thing, but you got to be out by 25. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't get the Paul Bass half court. But... Jalen Monroe's still running. <laughs> um, I hope we can count up those yards. JD, good to see you. How, how has the transition been? Uh, it's good. Um, oh. Ooh. Well, uh, Ooh. It's a transition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can mean a lot these days. She's right? got a good personality. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm spending more time at my desk. Okay. So, okay. Oh. you know, I'm spending more time at my desk. Okay. I'm doing all the things that that I, I knew Steve did, <sighs> but now I'm living it. Okay. So, you know, organization, you know, having to plan the schedule each week. Anything in the budget for an assistant? S- sports line. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, there's your end. <laughs> it's the feeling when they stack stack papers and then another stack of papers. Uh, it's not it's not that bad, but it is kind of, you yeah, know, like this week. I'm trying to figure out sports line. Who's going where? You know, we don't have a whole lot of games in town. Where are the highlights going to come from? You know, those kind of things, you know. Typing up the schedule. Who ever, you know, giving two, each guy two days off, you know. What day off am I going to have? Who's gonna? You know, it's just it's just that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. You know, it it, it it's cool. I C mean, level executive level stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. covering sports, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I've done that forever. I kind of I know the calendar and all that stuff. It's just uh, it's weird. It's still weird. The other day, I did a radio interview, and the guy introduced me as sports director, and I I almost corrected him on the air. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not the sports director. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right. You know, yeah, right. you just, uh, twenty Steve years disrespect and, yeah. Steve like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still sitting at my desk every now and then I turn around and Steve's yeah. not there, you know, yeah. so it's uh, it's different, but uh, it'll be fine. Um, it'll be good. Good to see you. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, so we got uh, Sportsline this week, first week of the playoffs. Golly. Uh, yeah, but you... <sighs> <laughs> bunch of teams have off because of those buys, you know, that kind of quirky stuff. Uh, but uh, Kim, Kim's got a press conference today, 1 yes. o'clock. So I imagine that, I mean practice. I'm wondering how she views they they have a they're going to have a ring ceremony before Oof. Oh, she might cancel it. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, national championship teams, She's they should be send Kramer out there to get yeah. hers. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz the baseball teams having a ring ceremony before the football game. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. That's a good way. To do it. I find it funny too. They're honoring the 2003 national championship team against the Florida. Florida against the, the team, the only team that beat you. you. Yeah, like I couldn't believe they didn't do it against Auburn. Yeah, it was such a great game for 03. Yeah, you know, it was like 
Yeah, but, I don't, hey, you know. I don't want to criticize. I, I mean, I was interviewing Benny Brazil last week. We were, and he just out of the blue, Jack. Why we lost to Auburn? <laughs> why we lost uh, uh, Florida? Why we lost to Florida, Jack? You know, he sounds like Chris Tucker. There exactly. he sounds just like Chris Tucker. <laughs> Uh, so he, he's a funny dude. Benny but, Logan? Uh, uh, B- uh, Benny Brazil. Benny Brazil, yeah, yeah, Coaches yeah, yeah. track and yeah. field. Benny Logan's a, I, I want to say he's a defensive coordinator at Catholic High now. I think he might be the D-line coach D-line for coach? sure. Yeah. He was at yeah. Dunham and now he's at Catholic. Yeah. He he was he was an analyst on the LSU staff. That's right. But he's not interested in being a full-time no. head coach. Hey, I, I I like to do some things in my personal yeah, time. I mean, the coaching, I mean, that's the thing about it. You get paid well, but the schedule is horrendous. Yeah. I mean, it's horrendous. Yeah, it never, you know. I'm sure some wives of coaches were like when they announced signing the new signing day was de- December 22nd. Oh well, there goes that time we yeah, had with you. There goes that month. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, like that was like one of the months that you could like just like see your family. I mean, it is, it's grueling. I mean, it is. I mean, you earn that check. You earn the check. I mean, I'm not here to, but it is. It, it's just a grueling life, man. Yeah, um, yeah. And you earn it. I mean, you you yeah, like sure. like like Brad Davis for example. Like he was a nomad. Mm-hmm. Like coaching at nowhere, Kansas, mm-hmm. nowhere, Missouri, all around. He told me, he's like, man, I had to, my wife, her salary, you know, kept us going for a while before I started making SEC money like the last five or six years. Right. You know, and so I, I think that that's one thing, too, when I hear about NIL and stuff like that. Well, the coaches are making millions. Well, the coaches were, you know, they interned and they worked and they got jobs and they held down jobs and they proved themselves, you know. I think now when you got a 17-year-old kid who hasn't really proved anything yet, that's where you lead to, like, entitlement and mm-hmm. problems, yeah. you know. So that's just my two cents on that. Sports director of WAFB 9 Sports, our friend Jacques Doucet, every, here with, uh, every Wednesday here with us on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll be back and close it out right after this, built by RMB live from our Click Here digital campus here in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We'll be right back. the market for a mortgage lender, you need to start with Doug Bickley and his team. Bickley has built a crew with over 50 years of combined lending experience. They've been in business for over 20 years and they love helping their clients achieve the American dream of home ownership. They're also key with working in real estate agents and helping their clients getting same day pre-approval. They average about one buyer a day getting them in a home. If you want to get in touch with Doug and his crew, it's easy. Call them 225-214-5154. 225-214-5154. Go see the Bickley team today. They're located on the corner of Corsi Boulevard and Sherwood Forest right here in Baton Rouge. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Ruth. Ah. <laughs> Hold on. Roofs up? Roofs up! Roofs up! Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, Our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one. You. Auctioner Andrews Institute. Long live you. Like, (gasps) will you marry me? Do I know you? Never sign a contract with a roofer before he gets on your roof. Call Go Roof instead. We offer a free, no obligation inspection. A beautiful roof every single time. Bobby, goes in the front. Roof, roof, go roof. Belmont Stakes Race Training. I'm sticking to roofing. Roof, roof, go roof. Kentucky Derby Training. Sticking to roofing. Roof, roof, go roof. 
Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Daniel Newman can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started today by calling Daniel Newman at 225-261-8262. 225-261-8262. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225 485 8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done! Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at GoMart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Chicken the roofing. Hey, Greg, the roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Beautiful roof every single time. True. True.
Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana and practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshner's to come back and work the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community to the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. I'm on my grind bullshit, can't fit on my schedule I'ma do what's best for me, you can keep all your lectures Spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone till November Pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December I got n****s on the block like traditional sinners OGs love me so I hang with traditional winners I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter Heat up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the Carter Coming back like KD, it's time to go harder Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up they say that life's a marathon, man, shout out to Nip. They start to think you falling off and they starting to flip. Circumstances start to change and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter, who's tied to your hip? They tried to push you to the side because they thought you would quit. May bend but never break, your cloth is legit. When you return in rare form, they all gonna be sick. You ever seen a living legend, just know that I'm me. Slow grind like IT, just know that I'm me. Back, sorry, a little a interview after the interview was Jock. Jock was hanging around, we were talking a little bit off the air, sorry about that. Um, appreciate you being here. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button. If you have not subscribed to the show, make sure to hit subscri uh, the subscription uh, subscribe button button before you get out of here. That bell will notify you when we go live. Uh, good stuff from Jacques. Uh, like I said, sorry about that with the uh, the extended break. We were uh, we were catching up a little bit off the air and uh, and talking. Uh, did hear Lane Kiffin yesterday talking about Dallas Turner's hit. On uh, on Jaden Daniels, it was Playing interesting that seed early. to uh, to hear what Kelly, uh, so excuse me, what Kiffin had to uh, to say about Turner's hit. He said, "I don't know how that's not targeting, and if it's not, I think you've got a problem." Uh, talking about the uh, the hurt uh, the hit on uh, on Dallas Turner, uh, he was putting the premium on protecting the quarterback, and I think that this should be a universal rule in football if you're going to do it at the highest level. And look, the quarterback position has turned into a um, a very protected, a very protected spot in in football, right? I mean, like that is a it, it's different. You know, you're you're throwing. You can't really see what's going on around your feet, um, and really, it, it's the marquee position of the sport. Where you know, a lot like if you look at 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 you know Jaden Daniels in LSU, if he comes out of the game, if you lose him, you're polarizingly different. Right, I mean the the whole tenor of the game changes, the whole feel of the team changes, the whole build of the matchup changes. Right, when when, when you take the quarterback off the field, specifically the high end guys. Right, there's about six to eight of them in the NFL. Uh, there's more of them in college football this year, but but usually it, it's not a lot of of people that can play the. The position at a very elite Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes type level, and the, the the protection of that has become the premium in the NFL because that's what they market. That's what they, you know, when it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Philadelphia Eagles, it's 
Jalen Hurts and Joe Burrow on the billboard, on on the marquee, on the on the build up for it, right? I mean, it's a very quarterback driven, promoted league, and for that, they have decided, along with the health concerns, of just keeping that spot protected, overly protected. And I think that that should be a universal rule at at all levels if that's going to be the way that football is is played at the highest level, is protecting the quarterback and protecting that position and and keeping you know the quality of the game at, at, at a very high level. And that that was, you know, I think Lane Kiffin loves to take shots at Alabama any ch- any chance that he can. Uh, he'll never pass up an opportunity to do that. But but I think that was his message, right? Like there there has to be a premium on protecting that spot. And if you're going to do it at the highest level, I think there needs to be some type of ruling on it at, at this level. And you know, I, I'm not here to debate whether or not Dallas Turner is a dirty player, you know, because. I think that's one thing that has been so lost in the game the last five years is, you know, look, man, there there is an art to football. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you may not want to recognize it or you may not, re- you know, really recognize it if you see it, but th- there is an art to playing the game at a very physical, physical level. And, you know, people like Dallas Turner were, you know, they, they were – they were celebrated. They were paid. They were a premium on on teams, and teams were built around that type of style for a long time. And that wasn't dirty. That was football. And you know, now in today's world, shots like he's taken on the quarterback are deemed dirty because you know it's it's outside of what the rules call for now. And I, I understand why they are like that but i still believe that there has to be room for for the art of football to be played right was it targeting did he deserve to get thrown out of the game yes is he a dirty player because of that i don't think so you know i don't i don't think so because you can give me more data that he did it to jackson dart and that he did it in a tennessee game you know i think that you're you're talking about a, a very physical football player who understands the he knew what would happen if he made that hit. He knows what happens if he if he strikes Jackson Dart. And I don't think his intent fully when he, he goes in for the hit is to knock him completely out of the game. Sure, that's a that that's something that you probably talk about by you know in the locker room and on the sideline, but when you're in the heat of action, you're just trying to affect the game and make the play. Right, but what you're ultimately trying to do is just get this guy thinking that I'm gonna be in his I'm gonna be in his face for the rest of the game, and you know I think that's that's ultimately what it was, right? I mean, was it targeting? Absolutely, it was targeting. Did he deserve to get thrown out of the game? One hundred percent. He should have watched the rest of the game from the sidelines. Does it mean that he's a disgustingly bad, dirty player? I, I I don't buy into it. If the Saints got him, I'd love it. Kick him out the league, Doug. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. Um, I guess the only thing that you would, they, I mean, Alabama has Kentucky next. I don't think that you're really concerned about what yeah. Kentucky's going to do against Alabama. But he'd have been suspended for the first half of the next game, correct? It happened in the second half, so you have to yeah. you have to miss a full game. Yeah, and so that's all you really would have. Because LSU, with, the, with no Jaden Daniels, they didn't seem like they had much of a fighting chance. And now you just hope that Jaden Daniels can come back against Florida because your defense did not inspire a lot of confidence walking away from Tuscaloosa. And Florida can score. Yeah, right. I mean, that's Their the first thing. 15 that's early. You know, I mean, for a team like Florida, you got to be looking at LSU and you're like, here's a, here's a golden egg opportunity, fellas. I mean. And Jaden Daniels is out. And I, I just, yeah, exactly. I just upped the pot for you. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, like there's more to play for. Give the 2003 team PTSD oh, walking back goodness, in there and losing man. to Florida at home. So you know, I mean, it'll it'll be a big spot come Saturday, and we'll learn more about Daniels and his availability today. A part of the SEC teleconference, we'll have all of that fed back to you uh, throughout the day. We'll have that sound for you, hopefully, uh, at some point uh, that that we can uh, that we can get to you. 
Uh, but we will uh, have all of that covered on whatever the latest is on Jaden Daniels and making sure and bringing you uh, what what is happening with him and his status for the game. He did not practice yesterday. I wouldn't anticipate him practicing uh, a lot of this week um, at this point, right? I think you, you you're talking about a player who can, you know, you can you can put you can put him out on the field um, no matter the practice participation throughout the week. If he's healthy to go on Saturday. Then, then you can make a call to put him out there, uh, well, even though he's missed extended time. Obviously, it's not as long ideal. as he takes care of his other duties. Yeah, no, I mean, just sure he goes to class. No, right. Sees right. his tutor. Gets a smoothie on time. That's right. Um, so goes to treatment. Uh, make sure you remember our friends, uh, new sponsors over here. How about Jude's Hot Chicken and Shrimp, located on Burbank? You got to go see them. Uh, it's a brand new spot. Bless you, buddy. I tried to hold in the sneeze yesterday, and it, I think I popped something in my neck. Yeah, that's Sorry, not a good thing. That's chicken. not a good thing. Yeah. Uh, check out our new spot, Jude's. It's the hot chicken. Uh, that's right, man. You got spice a little spicy there. Mm. Oh, spicy. Try <laughs> the honey. Try the, try the honey. Have you been? Yes. I it's have. fire. Yes. There you go. Stewie, give me a testimonial. What you got? Uh, I, I'd say try the hot honey. The hot honey is the flavor. The wings? I, mean, it, I get the wrap. Okay. So it's, so it's like a, a chicken wrap. With macaroni. Oh. There's a little a little sauce on there. Whatever sauce that you choose. For hot the, honey. The hot honey, whatever. You get the, the spicy, whatever. And then there's like coleslaw, but I don't get the coleslaw. Not, right. a, big, not a big coleslaw, coleslaw guy. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you but if you want to cut the mood, yeah. yeah, you can have some coleslaw. I'm not a, I've but tried the, coleslaw. The, the hot time. honey is the, is the flavor for me. Uh, 3930 Burbank Drive. Open 1030 to 930. You can follow them on social media. Uh, it's a great new spot that you can learn all about. Uh, it's Jude's Hot Chicken and Shrimp, uh, where you can get lost in the sauce. Oh. They tell you over there about the sauce, the Nashville Fire Sauce, the Nashville Honey Sauce. They also got milkshakes over there to help you out with the heat. Milkshakes are fire, too. There you go, Stewie. I, look, I, how I got you, how you just it. been sleeping on this look, thing? I, look, I've been there like a lot of times. Wow. Shout out to Ron. Ron put me on. No doubt, Ron. Ron, did. and then... Just, you know. A weed smoker's paradise. Yeah, but, <laughs> no but, doubt. Food is in that house. I mean, I'm just going off of location. I'm going off of you've described to me two of the clientele in the demo there oh, of yeah. Ron and Stewie. <laughs> what? I know their background <laughs> and what they would venture into that that store looking looking for and what would bring them there. So shrimp. it sounds like Jude's hot chicken and shrimp has cornered the market <laughs> on the heads. Uh, in the uh, the LSU zip code. Get, get, get a little busy around 420. <laughs> That's, right. <laughs> That's right. It comes in waves. And they stay open until like 10. Yeah, they go. 10 or 11. They know. So, I mean, like, they know. Uh, I forgot they to pick up my order. That's right. I'm, I'm <laughs> That's hungry, right. dog. Is Jude still open? <laughs> yeah, Jude Absolutely yeah. it is. Open until 10. Absolutely. You can ab- it, look, I'm online right now at judesbr.com. And you can order online. So, I mean, like, they have taken all of the pain out of the process for you. Oh, they got hot shit. Right? I mean, like, they got catch you a bong rip, order your Jude's <laughs> hot chicken and shrimp. It'll be ready for you when you pick it up. Odds are you'll see Stewie and Ron waiting on theirs. They even got the Because they got too stoned and forgot that you can order online. <laughs> they got the freestyle Coke machine, too? Oh, oh you wow. can. Be, oh. They know what they're marketing to. Yep. Yeah. And if you want to get some catering done, they do catering platters. Tailgates. You get real high. Tailgates. Oh, shit. I got 100 tenders. Uh, Judesbr.com. <laughs> Jude's Hot Chicken and Shrimp. Check them out. They're located on Burbank. Uh, Stewie approved. 10.30 a.m. until 9.30 p.m. daily. Stewie. So not just, uh, not quite Stewie's 10. Stewie's rolling it at 10. Yeah, yeah. Stewie. Hey, Jude, do me a favor. Damn, I forgot to pick up that order, dog. <laughs> It'll be still be there Y'all tomorrow. got it to go for Ron back there? <laughs> Ron's here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. The pictures on the website are fantastic. That's what I'm saying. The food looks just like that. It's, it's perfect. Jude's Hot Chicken and Shrimp. Brand new sponsor. Check him out. Judesbr.com. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning. Have a great Wednesday. Give him my darn theme music. <laughs> Hope you can hear it. Money through 
Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification, we about to go live. We got all your favorite guests, we got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show, come have a good time. It's the hottest show around, we ain't got to flex. Call up G, we get it done, we earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in, where they going next? Throw up the L's, now we lit, band playing next. From the boot to the east to the west coast, no matter where we at, we live, mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show, yeah. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification, we about to go live. 